You got a pretty thin slate of pitcher for tonight in MLB DFS, and it's one where there are a couple of good guys, but the drop off after that, I think at least is pretty big. Garrett Cole and Zach Wheeler are the headliners. Luis Garcia is not bad, but in a low strikeout matchup, after that, things get real dicey real fast. So to me, the focal point is going to be those top two guys, how to handle them, and then deciding. Is there anybody else? Is there anyone else we can trust on this slate who has a path to outscoring Cole and Wheeler? And if so, how should we use them? Where do we go for stacks? And much more. So the focal points for today are Cole and Wheeler and how they impact the rest of the way for you view this slate. Let's dive on in and get you set for Monday night. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. Here to break down Monday's 10 a game a main slate with lock set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for tonight. As far as weather goes for today, a couple slight chances of rain, but nothing too concerning, I don't think. Uh, the first one is in Washington for the Dodgers and the Nationals. Should be good to go there, but keep an eye on that one. Other one is in Atlanta for the Braves and the Phillies. I think the rain should move out before our first pitch. We should be good to go there too, but check back on both those. Check out the timeline of the rain, the intensity of the rain to make sure they're good to go because I do want to go to both those places, whether it be for pitchers or for stacks for tonight. So check back in on the weather for Washington and Atlanta. Before we dive into the pitching preview, a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed, because we have got you covered with MLB DFS every weekday, PGA DFS every week with myself and Brandon Gadula. USC DFS, Thoughts and Swaim. I've got NASCAR for the Coke 600 coming up later on this week, too. So a lot of your reasons to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Just search for it wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. The NBA playoffs are heating up, and you can make every game feel like Game 7 on FanDuel Sportsbook, an official partner of the NBA. Throughout the playoffs, all customers can place a no-sweat same-game parlay each week. You'll get up to $20 in free bets if you don't win. FanDuel has so many ways to play, and best of all, when you do win, you'll get paid faster than a fast break. Either way, you'll get up to $20 in free bets if your same-game parlay during the playoffs does not win. FanDuel Sportsbook, an official partner of the NBA, must be 21-plus in select states. Refund issued as non-withdrawable of free bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max free bet $20 per week. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 for the ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WHIP-IT. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. Or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Monday main slate. As mentioned, Garrett Cole is on this slate, and he is the highest salaried pitcher on FanDuel checking in at $11,000. Zach Wheeler is 10-3. Luis Garcia facing off with Cleveland is 10-1. we got Miles Nicholas at 96. Adrian Hauser, 94. Tyler Anderson facing the Nationals. He is 9,000. We have Nick Martinez, Zach Logue, Marco Gonzalez, Jordan Lyles, and David Peterson as the other is at $8,000 or higher. Now, Cole is facing the Orioles for the second straight start, which is a bummer because I hate familiarity within pitchers. I do still think he is the top guy of the night, in part due to the fitness of the slate and in part due to, I think, bigger concerns around Wheeler's spot for tonight. Now, Cole is at home, which does help, and he's pitching really well right now. We've seen his fastball cook. Like, it's been a very good pitch for him this year, so he's increased the usage on that pitch from where it was in his first two starts. So if we narrow things down to his past six starts, Cole has a 2.85 skill interactive ERA. His strikeout rate is 30% and his fly ball rate is down to 30% as well. The big improvement that we've seen with Cole, I think is at least uh, is most tied to that fly ball rate. A 30% fly ball rate for him is going to curtail some of the major issues he's had with home runs, especially given the home park in which he pitches. Cole was okay against the Orioles last week. He had just five strikeouts. He let up two earned runs, but he did last seven innings. He had a 13.4% swinging strike rate. 
The Orioles are about a league average offense, I would say, against righties. A 101 WRC plus, 22% strikeout rate, but they don't walk a whole lot. And that can help opposing pitchers go deep into games. And Cole can do that by himself, too, without help. He won 114 pitches a couple starts ago. So I do downgrade this for the repeat matchup. But I'm not downgrading it enough for me to push him out of the top spot for today. So Cole, to me, is the top guy of the night. Now, Zach Wheeler is the number two guy, I think, out of obligation. There's a big teardrop after them. And here's why I think I have to go Cole, despite the repeat matchup, over Wheeler in a non-repeat matchup. That's because Wheeler is on the road tonight, and he's had some pretty big home road splits since the start of last year. He's also facing a very good Braves team, and that's why I can't put Wheeler above Cole. But I do think that his ceiling is just as high as Cole's, which will keep him in second place here. It's been a dip on the road, and it's a I don't care too much about ERA because it takes longer to stabilize. There's some flukiness in there, but I care about strikeout rate because the batters I can be different. Guys can just be more comfortable, stuff like that. And Wheeler's strikeout rate has gone down on the road. It's 26% on the road since the start of last year, 31%. He is made uh, at home. He's made just two starts on the road this year, and he let up 10 earned runs across those two starts combined. So I actually do think it's a legitimate downgrade. I mentally downgrade guys on the road, um, but I think we need to legitimately downgrade Wheeler when he goes on the road. He is pitching well overall right now. His velocity is up across his past five starts. Uh, he's got a 2.74 skill interactive ERA in those five starts, 30% strikeout rate and a 5% walk rate. So outside of Cole, Wheeler is the best pitching the best of any guy on the slate, I would say by a pretty wide margin. So I will put him second because of that. But I do want to keep in mind the downsides with the home road splits, with the matchup. I think that if you were to deviate off of one of these guys, I'd rather deviate off of Wheeler because of those things we discussed. I think that you could go to Luis Garcia. It's a bad matchup from a strikeout perspective. He doesn't tend to go super deep into games, but does a 28% strikeout rate across uh, his most relevant sample. So I can see it, but I prefer to go with Cole and then Wheeler for tonight. The tough part is identifying a value play. And part of the reason it's tough is because Alex Cobb, I think, is the best one. And I've been burned by him a couple of times already so far this year. His ERA is 5.61. He's facing the Mets tonight. So it's not a great situation. But Cobb is $7,200. And... I think he is far and away the most viable value option for tonight. Let's see how this goes. The matchup here is tough because the Mets have a 121 WRC plus against righties and they have a low strikeout rate too. But despite the issues Cobb has had, he's been getting strikeouts. He has a 28% strikeout rate with a 12% swinging strike rate. And that's with great batted ball numbers as well. So I don't think his ERA is indicative of how good he has been. His expected ERA at Baseball Savant is 1.75. That is potentially one of the best marks in the league. You know, looking at Cobb last week, had some issues early at Coors Field, settled down, and then the six inning things got away from him, led to uh, seven total earned runs there. But, you know, it's Coors. That stuff definitely happens. He did face the Mets in his second start this year, so he has seen them before. And in that game, just four strikeouts. Um, across, I think, four and two-thirds innings. I think that's the one where he might have gotten hurt. But Cobb has six-plus strikeouts and three out of six starts. He has eight-plus strikeouts and two of those. And he had double digits in his debut. So he has upside. I have Cobb projected at 5.9 strikeouts for tonight. So he's not on that level. He's probably not getting double digits in this matchup. But that is the fourth-highest projected strikeout number on this slate for me. So I will rank him highest among the value options despite the issues. I just think there is enough there for us to feel good about Cobb, good enough, I should say, to use him over the other value plays. The value plays to me tonight, pretty underwhelming. So at the top, I've got Cole, then I have Wheeler, and then it dips down to Cobb, and then Luis Garcia, the other guy in that mix, if you want to deviate from Cole, Wheeler, or Cobb. Stacking's a bit easier, I think, and we've got some pretty legitimate teams in good matchups. So pitching is tough, hitting a little bit easier for today. There are a couple good options, and I think the Twins are the top one for tonight. The Twins are facing Bo Brisky, and both the results and the peripherals say we can stack against Brisky. His ERA, 5.13. His skill interactive ERA is 5.43, and he gets there 
due to a combo of batted ball numbers and plate discipline. The strike area for Brisky is 13%, 10% walk rate. So he's letting up a ball in play about 77% of the time. And 42% of those are hard hit with a 50% fly ball rate. When you add all that together, it leads to an expected ERA of 5.47 over baseball savant for Brisky. So things could actually even be a bit hair worse than the results have been so far. And we've seen specifically a lot of home runs allowed. He's let up seven home runs across five starts. He's let up multiple home runs in three starts. And yeah, you can say he's faced some tough teams in there. But the Twins are a pretty good team, too. They have a 113 WRC plus against righties. They're getting healthier as well, which makes them my favorite stacking option of this main slate. Carlos Correa has looked pretty good since he come off, came off the IL. He had three hard hit balls in a couple different games of the weekend. Isn't striking out. The salary is still pretty reasonable at $3,400. So I think it's a good time to buy low on a guy we know is really, really good. Correa has not had a good year so far, but I think based on some of the batted ball data recently, I think that will come. So Carlos Correa, a guy I am buying into now to get out in front of that. Unlike Brisky, Yoan Adon does have good batted ball numbers. And that's why I'm going to rank the Dodgers below the Twins in terms of stacking. But I still think they're a really good stack here. And that's due to Adon's plate discipline numbers. He has an 18% strikeout rate this year with a 14% walk rate. And the walk rate being high was something we saw in his numbers in the minors as well. So that part's probably not going away. And he has just a 6.6% swinging strike rate. We can expect these numbers to stick for Adon, and the numbers are why he has struggled so far. Now, the batted ball numbers, like I said, are not bad. He's got a 35% hard hit rate with a 34% fly ball rate, and both those are better than average. It just hasn't mattered. His ERA is 6.38. His expected ERA is 6.44. And he's been pretty consistently struggling. We've seen Adon let up three plus earned runs and all but two starts. He's let up four plus runs and half his starts. So it's not perfect to stack against him because I'd prefer some better batted ball data in terms of the opposing batters, but I still think that it's working and I still think that I would expect it to keep working going forward. So I think the Dodgers are a very easy sell here in a team I will build around for sure. Now, Freddie Freeman and Will Smith are not value plays, nor is Carlos Correa, so we're kind of stepping out here a bit. We'll talk about some more values in the next one. But I think it's worth mentioning that Freeman and Smith are, I think, on the verge of an explosion here right now. Both these guys have fly ball rates over 38% against righties. They're both making a ton of hard contact. So neither guy's been bad. They've both been fine. But I think they're about to get a lot better. So I'm going to start jamming them in now to get ahead of it. Like Freddie Freeman's $4,000. He's not low salaried, but he could probably be like 42, 43, getting a discount there. Smith could be around 36, whereas he's 32 or 34, somewhere in there. I want to get in on them similar to Correa before the numbers start to stabilize a bit from where they've been so far. The third stack is going to be the Astros. They're facing Zach Plesak, I believe. It's not officially announced on MLB.com yet. Uh, it could be Tristan McKenzie, but I'd stack him against McKenzie too. So either way, the Astros are third. just depends on whom they are facing. Plesak is a preference here. I, again, I would second McKenzie too, but prefer Plesak. He had a nice start his last time out. He let up just two earned runs across six innings, but that was against the Reds. Overall, Plesak has had a pretty soft schedule so far. He has made just two starts this year against teams inside the top 20 in WRC plus against righties. In one of those, he let up six earned runs to the Angels across three and two-thirds innings. The Astros rank second in WRC plus behind just those Angels. Even with the easy schedule, Plesak has had some rough peripherals. He has a 45% hard hit rate allowed with a 40% fly ball rate and a 4.88 skill interactive ERA. He also is not striking out a lot of people. So Plesak could get back to his 2020 form eventually. He's not close to it yet, though. So I think especially against such a good team, we should feel confident in stacking against him here. So I will be in on the Astros for sure. Now, I talked about Correa, talked about Freeman, talked about Smith. Let's search for some value guys here on the Astros. Let's run through the guys who sometimes pop into fun spots in the order for the Astros and outline how I do them in case they wind up being in there for today. The favorite for me is Chaz McCormick. He's also the highest salary. so shocker, but good pop even against righties. About a 180 ISO. I will take that for sure. Second is Jose Siri because he has some pop, but also 
he can swipe a bag. So I like him number two. I would go with Lemis Diaz last. Not a high upside guy against righties. And again, I do want to reiterate that I am still in on Michael Brantley now that he's seeming to have more upside than he had last year. So Brantley, just bumping that once again, we talked about him a couple times so far, my views of him shifting from where they were previously. So I, I do think that um, he definitely works. Let's move now to things to watch for today. I, I need to find some more value outside of just the Astros, uh, those guys. So I don't mind getting it via the right-handed Mariners. They're facing Zach Logue, who projects to let up a lot of balls in play um, and a ton of fly balls. That's a good recipe for one-offs. There aren't enough really good righties here for me to fully stack the Mariners, but Eugenio Suarez, Julio Rodriguez, Ty France, Dylan Moore, all those guys are definitely on the op- uh, on the menu for me for tonight. I could be okay with some Phillies. They're facing Tucker Davidson, who has struggled in small samples in the big leagues, and the Phillies are really good against lefties, so they definitely work. I have a high enough opinion of Davidson where they're outside the top three for me, but the Phillies are at least in play on the net. Finally, I'm okay with some Diamondback stacks. Mason Zach Greinke, so it's a revenge game for Greinke here. And he's getting better. He's not as bad as he was to start the year, but he's still letting up a lot of hard contact, a lot of fly balls. Arizona secretly has a really fun team for stacking. There are a lot of guys here I really like on this team. The one downside is that the roof is closed tonight. Uh, so not as good of a park factor as usual. I do still like them, but keep that in mind for stacking. It's not going to be full, full, full chase field for tonight. So keep that in mind. But the Diamondbacks to me is still an option for sure. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls. Going with a couple of lefties for today. The boring one will be Kyle Tucker facing off with Plesak. And Plesak letting up a lot of fly balls and hard contact. Not many strikeouts. Kyle Tucker absurd absurd hitter love him a lot so i'll go with him first the fun one max kepler facing off um with brisky kepler i think is kind of flown under the radar just because he's not correa he's not buxton and that's been a good thing i think in terms of expectations so i would say kepler is a guy a bit underappreciated i got five dingers so far this year he's been hitting the ball pretty well recently so home run calls for today are kyle tucker and max kepler That is all that we have here for today on the solo shop. But once again, a quick reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts. And again, while you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. If you've got questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you on this slate. Enjoy using guys like Eric Cole and Zach Wheeler. Hopefully it works out. We'll talk to you once again on Tuesday. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.